Welcome to Greater Life, Greater Impact. My name is Janet, and today we're going to be talking about opening up your heart center, opening up the energy of your heart. Um, those of you who are new to my class, we do these every Tuesday, and today, or I mean this year, for the year 2022, we've been focusing on manifesting miracles and healing the pains of the past. And I think we've had some really powerful healing sessions doing that. Um, we've helped some people individually. We've worked collectively as a group. And um, today, I really want to focus on one of the most powerful healing aspects for healing the pains of the past and for manifesting miracles in your life, which is the center of the heart. Last class, we talked all about healing mother, father, family wounds, and we focused on the lower three chakras, the root chakra, which is about family and your foundation and stability. We, we focused on opening up the sacral chakra, which is about the womb. It's about mother. It's about primal feelings, about um, sexuality. And so we, we focused on opening up those centers for healing. And then we moved on up into the power center, which is right here, just below your heart in the sternum area, above the belly button. And we focused on bringing energy and openness to that space so that you could have more confidence and set healthy boundaries and stand up for yourself and be a more sovereign human. So today, as that energy that we've kind of expanded and opened up from last week, if you didn't watch last week, please go catch the replay over on my YouTube channel, Greater Life, Greater Impact, and you can watch that um, healing the mother and father wounding. But as we open up these lower, more um, earthbound, earth-connected chakras, then it starts to open up space to expand your heart. And not only that, the heart is there as a as an energy center to help bring balance and healing and stability and forgiveness to these other lower three chakras that we focused on last week. So um, now we're in now that we've done that work from last week and we've kind of opened up some space there, a little bit more space than there was before. And we've cleared some things out, some gunk out of those spaces. Now we're ready to kind of come up into the heart center and open and expand it for uh, healing, for balance, for forgiveness, for um, a, a better energy flow of, of love in our lives. So the heart center is all about love. It's about the laws of love. It's about flow and balance and forgiveness and healing and unity and um, laws of love. And so that's really where I want to put my attention today is on your heart center. So if you haven't already, you may want to grab a pencil and a paper so that you can take some notes because we are going to do some self-healing today. We're going to drop down into our bodies. We're going to drop down into the heart center. and We're going to do some, some deep inner looking um, because there's so, there's so much information that I could give you on this region of the body and how much it does to bring balance to the upper chakras, the spirit center chakras, and to bring them into alignment and harmony with the lower chakras, the earthbound chakras, bringing the physical aspects and the spiritual aspects together in the heart to bring unity and balance and healing and, and a freer, a more healthy flow of love. So I think this is one of the most important centers that we can focus our healing on as we do our inner work. <clears throat> so as I said before, the heart center is really a place where the highest levels of healing begins to happen in you. It's where unity is created. It's where unity inside of you is born. It's where compassion and empathy live. It's... Um, the, it's the center in you that causes you to be more magnetic. So you will draw to you the things that are meant to be yours based on what you love. So if you have blockages or you're weighed down by a heavy heart, it's going to definitely impede your ability to do that. Um, the heart center is a place of, it's a place where we express our truest and highest selves. 
your truest and highest, most authentic version of you it comes from the heart. But many people have a hard time accessing that because they've experienced so much trauma in their lives. And when we go through trauma and drama, often what happens is we shut down that heart or we put up big walls to protect our heart from further wounding. And with those big, heavy walls there from the trauma and the drama, we're not, we're not able to really freely access the emotional side of ourselves. And if you can't access that authentic, that authentically emotional aspect of yourself, then it's really difficult to tap into um, connecting with others from a loving space. So we're going to talk about all of that. Um, the heart center is what allows you to open yourself up to high levels of intimacy in relationship. And so if you find that you're not comfortable in a, in a place, and I'm not just talking about sexuality, but I'm talking about heart to heart connection, where there's this free flow of exchange of love and energy and warmth and emotion and vulnerability and compassion and empathy. And all of those things can freely flow from your, your heart to another human's heart. If you're uncomfortable in that intimate space with somebody else, um, you don't want them to know the deepest, darkest secrets of your heart, then there's probably some imbalance in the energy of your heart center. There's some restriction. Something needs to be released. <clears throat> so the heart also governs beliefs and attitudes and values in you. So if you have um, a hard time wending your way through unhealthy belief systems or belief patterns about yourself, um, or even about others, maybe you're a little bit more judgmental than you'd like to be, then uh, that, that energy is harbored and it's also resolved in the heart, on the center, in the center of the heart. It's where we store the energies around <clears throat> attitudes, healthy or unhealthy attitudes about life, about ourselves, about others, about programs and systems. Um, and as a result of that, it also feeds into your immune system. So our, the immune system in our body is largely governed by the way that we feel about ourselves. Um, people who have, who have a tendency to store additional weight on their bodies, if you're overweight or obese in any way, that is directly tied to the way that you feel about yourself. And so is the rest of your immune system is directly tied to the way that you feel about yourself. And so if you have um, a lot of illness, you have a hard time getting over illness or um, your immune system just is not functioning properly, then one of the first places you can go to bring resolution to that is to the heart center, to expand that heart center. <clears throat> when we're in a state of the free flow of love, both giving and receiving. So the giving out side is usually the left or the right side of the body. The receiving side is the left side, the feminine side. The masculine side of us gives out love. The feminine side of us receives in love. It opens up, it's vulnerable. And it allows for that inner nourishment and nurturing to take place. So it's that that receiving side is largely fed by self-love. So you can tell when your heart is in a place of balance because you have a lot of self-respect and self-love and you nurture yourself. And um, you turn to the highest expression of yourself for healing. And you also allow that part of yourself to govern what gets sent out, whether it's judgmental or um, bitter or harsh or angry or, ang or judgmental, <clears throat> whatever it might be. So um, this is the center for laws of love. So when I'm working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, oftentimes if an issue comes up or a, um, you know, if we're, if, if our attention is drawn to the heart center in a healing session, one of the 
one of the most important questions that I'm going to ask you in a session like that is, who do you need to forgive? And sometimes it's yourself, but oftentimes forgiveness is tied to the way that you have judged others and the way that you have um, witnessed the suffering in others, but also experienced suffering at the hands of others. And many of us who have done a lot of that inner healing work around wounding and abuse and pain in the heart center, we know, we know now, we didn't know then, but we know now because we've learned that when other people harm you or hurt you or abuse you, it's never about you. It's always about what's tormenting them what's hurting inside of them, because we know that hurt people hurt people. Okay, um, so I want you to just kind of sit and ponder for a minute as you think about what is weighing your heart down? What is sitting heavy on your heart center right now? Um, are there issues in relationships where the relationship isn't able to freely flow? Maybe there's judgmentalism, maybe there's abuse, maybe there's pain, maybe um, you've experienced the loss of a loved one and you're hurting from that. So I just want you to go into your heart for just a moment. Let's get centered before we jump in. So just slow down your breathing. I really want you to focus in on what's going on inside your body. So slow your slow your thinking down. You can even slow your breathing down. Heart is about balance, harmony, unity, love, forgiveness. So I want you to think about where in your life there is an absence of harmony, unity, love, balance, and forgiveness. <clears throat> Just breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. As you breathe out, we're going to try to, we're just gonna give your body permission to let go of tension. If you're holding a lot of stored, um, maybe unresolved energy in your heart center, it's gonna show up on your shoulders and in your back and maybe in the front part of the chest, your arms, your hands. So look, Look in the body, put your awareness inside your body. Just drop down deeply into the center of your heart right now. And notice if there's any tension coming up around that area of your shoulders, your back, your chest. Invite those muscles to soften on the exhale. When you breathe in, I'm gonna invite you to just breathe in tons and tons of liquid light. So in, in other words, <clears throat> light is the equivalent of love. So I want you to breathe in all of the love that you did not get, that you deserved and that you needed. Breathe that into your body and let it fill up your timeline. So from the time that you were a newborn or even before then, before you even got into this body. You can go to the timeline before that and just notice where are the absences? Where are the holes? Where's the void that is left unfilled that did not get the love that it needed? Were you three? Were you two? Were you a newborn? Did it happen before birth? Were you in the womb? Were you not wanted? I just want you to go into your heart space and just notice where those voids are. And as you breathe in, we're just gonna breathe in tons and tons of liquid light in the form of love and nurturing. And as you breathe in, I just want you to think in your mind, I love you. You're saying it to you. And you can say it to your heart. You can say it to your higher self. You can say it to that newborn you, the three-year-old you, the six-year-old you, just whatever comes to mind. Breathing in deeply all of that love and just saying in your mind, I love you. 
I love you. I love you. Opening up that space of the heart. As you breathe out, I just really want to invite you to soften and let go and surrender and drop your shoulders, relax your face. Let's go down deep into the, to the throat where the stem of the tongue is. Think about where your tongue originates and just relax the root of your tongue. <clears throat> relax those muscles around your neck and your jaw coming down into the heart. So we're just gonna do this, gently tapping. You can tap with fingers or an open hand, tapping on this thymus gland, which is connected to the heart. <clears throat> and as you're tapping, I just want you to open up your heart a little bigger and a little wider and say, I love you. Now, the heart is about forgiveness also. So whoever pops into your mind that, that you need to forgive, that you need to release, that you need to let go of, maybe you're harboring unloving energy <clears throat> about somebody. Again, the heart is about balance, unity, love, oneness. It's the network. It's what connects you to the grid. The, the matrix. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. Just saying, I love you to God. I love you. I love you. You can say it to your higher self. I love you. I'm sorry I didn't see you. I'm sorry I didn't know you when I was going through my trauma and my drama. Please forgive me. Thank you. You can also tap on the crown. Just saying and repeating, I love you. You can also say it. We said it to God. We said it to our higher selves. You can say it to those that you don't feel love for. I love you. I'm sorry that you're hurting so much that you would project it onto me. I'm sorry for what's inside of me, for how I'm judging you based on the pain in me. Please forgive me for that. Thank you. Good, just keep tapping, coming back to the thymus gland. Ooh. Love is what allows you to forge through um, and create unselfish relationships. And so the more that we can open that space up, the better. So I want you to continue to drop your awareness down into the heart, down through the heart. Let's go down below the heart into the upper stomach. This is, again, this is the father center. This is about father wounds. So I want you to say to father, I love you. Now this can be God the father. This can be your earthly father. This can be a father figure, a stepdad, an uncle, whoever, a grandfather. I want you to just say into the dropping down into the upper gut and say, I love you. I love you to father, all the fathers. Breathe into that space. Woo, breathe out. Wow, there's some heaviness coming up there. So I really want you to pull in the tons and tons of liquid light into your upper stomach. Breathing in all the love that you didn't get from father, grandfather, God the father, whatever father figures were in your life. Breathe in all the love that you need. Bring it in in the form, again, of liquid light and love. Breathe that in, breathe it into your bones. When you exhale, on the exhale, I really want you to invite you to drop your shoulders, relax the tension there. You can 
let's do this. Let's just kind of rotate our head around on the top of our necks and see if there's any tension. You might notice tightness or crackling or I don't know, places where there's resistance or tightness in your muscles. So roll your head around on the top of your neck, open up some space there and breathe in that liquid light or love. All the love that you didn't get, that you deserved, that you needed in the time that you needed it, breathe that into your body and just send the light to where it's needed. It can go into your heart. It can fill that up. It can go into your bones. It can go into your organs but just fill your body with that liquid light and just say to the light, go to where you're needed. Send the light to where it's needed. Breathing in, breathing out, dropping down, down, down. So let's now go down into the womb area, which is the sacral chakra. And I want you to think about mother, all the mother wounding. Woo! Notice how heavy, if there's any heaviness coming up, were you disapproved of by your mother? Did your mother, was your mother not available for you emotionally? Did she not approve of you? Did she abandon you? Did she reject you? Did she, was she just not there for you? <clears throat> Notice what's coming up there. And breathe light and breathe love into that space. Fill it up, expand it out. Whew. Breathing out all the gunk, breathing out all the blame, breathing out all of the heaviness, breathing out all of the sadness, the I'm not enoughness. Breathe that out of your body. Let it go. <clears throat> and I want you to say to mother, you can place a hand over your heart and a hand over your lower gut and just say, I love you. I love you. Now, this can be any mother. It can be if you're a mother. Yeah, heat coming up, yes. So just breathe through that heat, Shauna. Expand into that energy where you feel it the most. I really want you to go in there intuitively with your, your imagination. You're gonna have to put on your pretend muscles and just expand that out. So go into wherever you're feeling it the most, the heaviness, the heat, whatever you're feeling. There could be a stabbing, a heaviness, a gunkiness, I, that's the best word I can come up with, but whatever it is that you feel that's in those areas as you're dropping your awareness down deep into your body, into father, into mother, dropping down. Notice I am feeling actually something in my upper gut on the left side, which is feminine side, the female side. So there is some female wounding. Yeah, Karen says there's blackness. Thanks for the feedback. Good job, you guys. Thank you for sharing. <clears throat> so blackness, I want you to go into that blackness and just breathe life into it. Breathe light into it and just fill that blackness, that black hole with love. Like you stepped into the center of the sun and the sun stepped into the center of you. Expand it out. Sharp pain in the bottom of the ribs on the left side. You guys, thank you for the feedback. Good job. Okay, sharp pain. Bottom of the ribs, left side. That's the female side. So um, bottom of the ribs, that's your power center. So this is, um, that's also father wounding. Isn't that interesting? So it's the feminine side of you is being affected by your power center. So your power center is about boundaries. It's about sovereignty. It's about not being able to stand up for yourself and speak up for yourself and honor and respect yourself. So just breathe into that. We're not going to judge it. We're not going to go into talk therapy. We're just going to look for where is the energy showing up in your body. Nicole says a feeling of wanting to cry. Good. Let that out. Let it, let yourself cry into that. Just let yourself feel like it's okay to feel this way. It's okay. It's okay that you feel sad and it's okay that you express that sadness. So, but I want your attention to be in your body and I want you to breathe. So do not hold your breath. Keep your attention within. Don't go up into your head or dropping out of your head or dropping down deep into the body. Katie says right side, womb area, sharp stabbing. Good. We don't need to know what that's about. So the right side is the masculine side. 
right? It's about getting shit done in your life. It's about stepping forward, but it's also connected to the male people in your life who maybe have wounded the feminine part of you. The, that womb represents the female aspects of you. And you all have them, whether you're male or female, you have feminine aspects of you. That's the nurturing, spiritual, sensitive, compassionate um, side of yourself. <clears throat> that just when you hear a baby cry, you want to hold it. It's that part of you. Okay. So how has male energy, a male figure in your life or male energy wounded the feminine aspect of you? Because that sharp stabbing is a wound. Good. Keep breathing into that. If you're feeling wounds like that, sharp pains or heaviness, I want you to go right into the center of it. And just invite that energy to spread out. Put the sun energy. Remember how I said it's like you stepped into the center of the sun and the sun steps into the center of you. Breathe into that. Close your eyes. Slow your breath. Go right into the center of the heaviness or the pain. And expand it out. Like, you know how the tendrils of the sun push out in every direction? I want you to push that energy out in every direction and breathe. When you breathe out, push your aura out. Let your light fill up the room that you're in. Breathing in, you're filling up the space with light like I, like I taught you earlier. We're filling up that space with light and love and truth because the truth is, you are love. You didn't need love to be gifted to you by those people who let you down. You already are all the love that you need. So breathe it in. Breathe in your higher self. Breathe it deep into your bones and your cells. I want you to feel your higher self taking up space in your body. On the exhale, we're letting go. Letting go of all the gunk letting go of all the tension, letting go of those tears coming up. If you feel the need to cry it out, that's okay. It's okay to feel that way. It's okay to cry. It's okay to let it spill out, but I want you to breathe. And I also would like you to keep your attention at the base of the spine. Do not leave the base of the spine. Let's drop down deep, 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 deep deep into your body. We're going to go down through the womb now. If you're finished saying I love you to mother, to the feminine, to the female side of you, all the aspects of mother, mother, grandmother, maybe you're married to a mother, maybe you are a mother, just all of that. Say I love you. Dropping down now into your foundation at the base of the spine. I want you to put your focus and your attention at the base of the spine. This is your foundation. Breathe into it. Like there's a big, luminous, beautiful red ball of light at the base of the spine, the size of a basketball. This is family. This is about family. This is about rooting being rooted, grounded, stable, safe. Ooh, you should feel safe in your family, but we don't always feel safe in our families. We should feel safe on this planet and in our societies, but we don't always feel safe around people that hurt us. So I want you to drop down into the base of the spine now and just say to all those people who have ever rejected you, betrayed you, belittled you, hurt you, harmed you, wronged you, at whatever level they did. And I want you to just say to all of those people, I love you. I release you from my suffering. Breathe in deeply, breathe out, let go. <sighs> letting go of tension, letting go of gunk, letting go of uh, pain, letting go of wounds, letting go of suffering. Good. I really want us to focus on resting at the base of the spine. Open up some space there. Ooh, get into your hips at the base of the spine. Breathe and soften. Drop your shoulders on the exhale. 
We want to let go of all the tension. So you're going to have to find it. Where is that tension in your body showing up? Where's that resistance? Okay, you got to find that. So look, I'm actually feeling some pain and stabbing in my back. So I'm going to kind of reposition myself so that I can relax those muscles. So I can breathe into the base of my spine and let go of tension. That's what I want you to do. You might notice tension in your eyeballs. Drop your shoulders on the exhale, relax your face, relax your neck. Let's roll the head again and see if we can find more tension coming up or if it, you have more range of motion now that you've opened up some space. Rolling your shoulders, open up, open up, open up space. The goal is to open you up and we're gonna get to the heart. We are, but I need you to be rooted and grounded and stable first. Breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> Letting go. The exhale is about release. The exhale is about surrender. The exhale is about letting go of tension, tightness, gunk. Breathe out all the gunk. <sighs> so I want you to picture all the gunk leaving your body. It can go in whatever direction it wants, up or down. It can absorb into the light and change and transmute itself. Um, it can go in whatever direction it wants to. It can transmute however it wants to. Just notice it. You're not here to force the energy. You're here to observe the energy. Breathing into the base of the spine. And as you breathe out, just let go. Letting go of the suffering. Letting go of the need to suffer about all of your trauma and all of the drama, letting go. So I want you to think about all of the, the sad things, the hard things, the hurtful things that have happened in your life and all the people connected to all of that pain and suffering. And I, we're gonna just pretend that they're helium balloons. You're gonna let them go on the count of three, as you let those helium balloons go and drift on up to the light, we're sending these beings to the light. You're letting them go. Letting go of those tethers that are keeping you attached to your own pain and suffering. So as you let go of this big bundle of helium balloons, which represents all the people that harmed you, I want you to say out loud, I bless them. Breathe in, breathe out. I bless them. Letting go on the exhale, drop your shoulders, relax your face, your tongue, your back. Ooh, there it goes. There it goes, good job. You can still hold yourself up tall and straight, but you can let go of tension. That's what I want you to do. I bless them. Send them to the light, hand them over to God. It's not your job to fix. It's not your job to attach. It's not your job to cling to them through your suffering. It's not your job to blame. It's not your job, not your job. Let go, breathe it out. And as you let them go, I want you to also say, I release them from my suffering. Interesting how we're working at the base of the spine around wounds and stability, but yet the heart is the place where these energies are resolved. The heart is all about forgiveness. It's about openness, expansiveness. It's about love. Isn't that interesting that we're doing the work at the base of the spine right now, but the heart is actually the one that's processing this. So just again, one more time, I release them from my suffering. And you can literally picture that yourself handing them over to God. Hand it over, let it go. Good job. Keep breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth, letting go, letting go, letting go. I really want to invite your bodies to go into a state of non-resistance and surrender. You're surrendering to love. 
You're surrendering to love. So it's okay. It's you're safe. And now um, we're going to say to all these people that offended you and hurt you and harmed you and wronged you and abused you and betrayed you and abandoned you. We're going to say to them, I forgive you. Just say to all of them, I forgive you unconditionally. Forgiveness is you letting go of your own suffering. You letting go of those tethers. You letting go of clinging to your suffering so that you can be a victim. Somewhere on the subconscious level, you might be a victim. So just let that go. And say to them, all of them, I forgive you. And just release them, send them to the light, hand them over into the arms of God if you have to, and let God handle the healing of these people. Sorry, I'm getting distracted, letting people in. Okay. <sighs> big breath in, big breath out. So notice where did the pain go or the heaviness go? Did it move? Did it change? Did it get less? What is going on now? Some of you were wanting to cry. Some of you, some of you felt a sharp stabbing in your bodies in various different places. So what is different now? I really, there was blackness. Okay. I want you to notice, and then if you're willing to type, share that in the, in the message box. What is different now that you've released and let go? <clears throat> the pain moved to my heart, and then it lessened. Good, Linnea, thanks for sharing. Good job. Okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna go to the next level of forgiveness. Katie says loved. Okay, good, 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 good. So it changed, it transmuted to love. The next level of forgiveness has to do with you. So what are you harboring about you? How are you disapproving of you? When you get rejected by someone who's supposed to be loving you, but maybe can't because they're not, they don't love themselves. Oftentimes we, we turn that um, projection of their pain and suffering inward onto ourselves. And then we go into, I'm not enough, I'm not lovable, I don't matter, I'm wrong, I'm bad, whatever it is, what, whatever self-disapproval you come up with. Carla says numb. Interesting. That's interesting. Notice where the numbness is. Notice the intensity of the numbness. There's not much intensity to numbness, but I just want you to pay attention to it and see if you can infuse that with light. Um, it might be numbness, but it also might be neutrality. So take a look, maybe ask the energy, are you neutrality or are you numbness? If it's neutrality, that's good. That's where we want to go. Because when you're in a state of neutrality, then you're sovereign and then you get to choose. Okay, we're going to move to the next level of forgiveness, which is self. <sighs> So what I want you to do, I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to just say yes to these questions. I'm going to get to your comment in just a minute, Katie. Can you let go of disapproving of yourself because others disapproved of you? Can you let go of disapproving of yourself? And again, you're the only one who can either say yes or no to that because nobody can do that for you. So can you and will you let go of disapproving of yourself. Put your hand over your heart. I just want you to say out loud, yes. Breathe in, breathe out. Let it go. Drop your shoulders on the exhale. Can you let go of disapproving of yourself some more? And can you let go of that self-disapproval even more than that? Say yes. Just say yes. And can you let go of disapproving of yourself even more than that? Say yes. And keep breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. Katie says it moved to the backside kidney area like it was trying to hide, but then it released with the forgiveness, with thoughts of some people I hadn't thought about in years. Good. Good job. Good job releasing. Now we're working on self, letting go of disapproval. Okay, so now, can you let go of all of the little fragments and parts and pieces and the hiding parts of the self-disapproval in you? Can you let go of all 
of the resistance to loving yourself? Can you let go of that? Just say yes. Don't overthink it. Get out of your head. Get into your body. Breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> Pay attention to your body. Drop your awareness down to the base of the spine. Get into your hips. I really want you to stay in the hip area at the base of the spine. That's where safety is and stability and foundation. <sighs> We're creating a foundation where we can open up our hearts. And opening up your heart is a very vulnerable thing to do. So if there's not safety and stability in you, why would you do that? Okay. Breathe in, breathe out. Now, can you give yourself some approval? <sighs> breathe in, breathe out. So say yes. So now, audibly, with your voice, I want you to say the words, I bless myself. Breathe in, breathe out, drop down to the base of the spine. I bless myself. Get into your hips. You can also go down the legs and under your feet, but be deep in your body. Be in your body. Be in your body. Drop down out of your brain. Be in your body. Take up space in there. Put your awareness there, your attention getting into the hips and the legs at the base of the spine. I bless myself. Yeah, Mike says left glute is where you feel it. So that's the feminine side of the body. It's also the root chakra. It's about foundation. So how was the feminine side of you, the spiritual side, the nurturing side, the compassionate, empathic side of you? wounded and why did that part of you not feel safe shauna says lots of yawning yeah that's because you're processing and you're changing the frequency of this energy in your body good job <clears throat> good job we're preparing to open up the heart good job breathe in breathe out i bless myself i release myself from this suffering letting it go you don't have to hold on to the tethers of wounding and be a victim anymore. You can be free of it and stand resolute on your own two feet in the autonomy of your, of your soul, the foundation of your soul. Shedding tears, good job. Just release and let go. Tell your mom you love her. Tell her you forgive her. It wasn't her fault, it wasn't your fault. It's okay. Tell your dad, same thing. Let those tears just flow through. Keep your awareness at the base of the spine. Breathe in, breathe out. We're letting it go. We're not going to talk about it. It's not talk therapy. We're just noticing what your body's doing. I want you to be the silent witness of this energy so that you don't have to suffer anymore. So that you don't have to, like when people offend you or they harm you or they wrong you. You can just be the silent witness of it without really getting all up in your feelings about it. You just release it and let it go. Okay, and then just say out loud, I, I forgive myself for carrying this, right? I did the best that I could. I forgive myself for carrying it. This pain and suffering is not who you are. It's not serving you anymore. It maybe did at one point. It gave you good information. But now that you're aware and you're awake to the fact that you're storing this on your hard drive, it's just data. So just release it. You release it through the free will, through your, your agency to choose. And then say out loud, I bless all the witnesses to my suffering. I release all the witnesses to my suffering. And I forgive unconditionally. Anything or anyone outside of me that is connected to my suffering, I'm letting it go. Breathe in, breathe out. Just release. If you have to come up with um, imagery in your brain or in your mind or in your body, like letting go of balloons or letting go of a flock of doves and they fly away, whatever you got to do to release and let go. If it's physical for you, Breathe into the base of the spine. 
Breathing in liquid light into your bones, your cells, your joints, your organs, your body, your flesh. Breathing light into all of those spaces and breathing out all the gunk and releasing tension wherever you feel tight. Because wherever you feel tension in your body, that's where you're storing the gunk, the data around all of this pain and suffering. Okay, good job. Forgiveness is the ability to be the silent witness of your experiences without getting too caught up in the need to be overly emotional and overly connected to pain and suffering. It's just witnessing what's going on in the world without taking it personally. That's sovereignty. That's sovereignty. When you can let go of what other people are thinking or feeling or projecting onto you. You're in a state of neutrality. It's like walking through a minefield and bombs are going off around you and you're witnessing them and you're like, it is what it is. I'm okay. You're an infinite being. You're made of infinite, immortal, um, eternal material, spiritual matter. That stuff can be quickened at the blink of an eye just by breathing and choosing. So because you're an infinite spiritual soul, um, nothing can threaten you. Nothing can harm you. What could possibly threaten infinity? You can't die. You can't run out of time. Nothing can be taken and you can't lose anything. Even when you think you're losing everything, even when you think you're suffering, you're really not. It's just an experience. It's an activity going on with mortal material that you happen to think is you, and it isn't. Your body is not you. So as you breathe, I want you to drop down into the depths of your soul, the foundation of your soul at the base of the spine. That's a portal to your highest self. Another portal to the highest self is the heart. So we're also going to go there. So allow a portion of your awareness to come up into the heart. And I want you to close your eyes, put on your pretend muscles. Let's go into the body. And I want you to see your heart beating. Notice it. Pay attention. What does your heart look like as it's pumping blood through your system, through your material body that isn't you? I want you to notice, notice, just watch it, observe it, thank it for working so hard to keep your body going. Now, let's pretend that there's an imaginary door on the side of your heart. We're going to step into the foundation of your soul, your higher self beyond the physical flesh. We're going to, we're going to transcend the physical you. We're going to go into the heart space now. So as you, as you open up that door on the side of the heart, you go into the center of your heart and you notice that it's just a big expanse of golden white light. In fact, here, let me share this again. I've done this before. Pammy, I'm going to share your, your avatar picture. This golden white expanse of light that's shining through these trees here or down into this cave, I want you to notice the light. I want you to feel the expansion of that. Feel that expansiveness in your heart, in your soul. Like you stepped into the center of the sun and the sun stepped into the center of you. I want you to breathe and take up more space. Let your inner light spread out. Let yourself, let your aura, this is more than just your aura. It's your essence. It's your presence. That's brilliant golden white light. Let that fill up the room right now. I want you to feel into the expanse. I want you to feel expansive. I want you to notice what it feels like in your body to shine through the body. Pay attention to the feelings in your body as you, you may have to pretend it until you actually feel it. 
but pretend you can feel it. On the exhale now, instead of just only releasing the gunk and letting go and surrendering, I want you to also expand like the sun, like the sun lives in the center of your heart. And there's no floor or walls or ceiling in this room. It's just expansive golden white light. Now, now, again, I'm going to I'm going to give you some reminders as you breathe into this expansive energy, jot down what it feels like. What does it feel like to be in your body? It's the safest place for you to be actually, by the way, is in your body, expand it out. What does that feel like? Give me some adjectives. What does it feel like to be in your body, spread out, expanded to the degree that you recognize light is infinite. It's not contained in this room. It goes beyond the walls, beyond the boundaries, beyond the borders. It goes out into the universe. Shauna says, I feel creation. Yeah, that's oneness. That's unity, that's harmony, that's balance, that's, that's life force, that's personal power. Feel it exploding out from your heart in every direction. Now, where does your light end and God's light begin? Katie says, I feel tingling. Good, that's energy moving. So good job because you've probably unplugged some blockages. So that's, that's actually a really good sign because things are moving. Give me more descriptive words. What does it feel like to be in your body? Expand it out as you tap into the stillness within you. This inner presence that is now filling up time and space. Where does your light end and God's light begin? It doesn't, right? It just integrates. So now you are God's light. You are God's light. And I want you to say it. I just want you to say, I am. Breathe in through the nose, bringing that light in from its source, which is God. Breathing that light and that love, that infinite eternal light and love into your bones, your flesh, your cells, your organs. That's God. So breathe in God. Breathe out and expand God. And notice that you are. And I want you to say out loud a couple of times. I am. Someone says carefree, peaceful, lighthearted. Good. Good, good job. Good job. I want you to say, I am. Do you see how powerful you are? How you can create a space inside of you. Well, it, you're not creating it. It's just there. It's like your higher self is leaning up against the door jam going, hey, hi, I'm love. I'm peace. I'm power. Welcome home. Because you were distracted. You were disconnected before. So this carefree, peaceful, lighthearted creation feeling inside of you, that is you. This is you. You are a unique, divine, individual expression of the light. That is you. That's your I am. And it's connected so intricately and so deeply to God that at some point, as you shine out into the expanse of the universe, you recognize you are God. And God is within you. Every particle of you is infused with God, with the love of God. So feel it, notice it, pay attention to it. Okay, now, um, it's almost impossible it's almost impossible to love God, love others, um, to be in loving relationships if you don't love you. It's almost impossible. 
If you don't recognize that you are love, you are the love that you think you need, you are that. You don't need it gifted to you from your parents, your lover, your spouse, your children, whoever. Whoever you're running to, to get love, you don't need it gifted to you. It's not their job to gift you, you. It's your job to tap into you. Does that make sense? So I want you to breathe into that some more. Uh, and, I'm, and I really am going to invite you to start pondering on self-love. So as we held a hand over our hearts and we expanded out into the universe and pushed that light out or just noticed that it's already out, I want you to forgive you and I want you to give yourself some approval. Can you give yourself some approval? Just say yes. Can you give yourself some more approval? Now, can you give yourself love? So we're going to say out loud, I love you. Go into that heart space, go into your higher self, go into the foundation of the essence, the presence of your higher self. Go into that. Deep, 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 breathe into it. And I want you to say to him or her, I love you. I'm sorry I didn't see you. I love you. I love you. Without self-love, you can't forgive. You can't open your heart to others. You, love cannot freely and completely in its fullness flow through you without self-love. So as you continue to occupy this space, I want you to, let's pretend there's a giant mirror in front of you. In fact, if you have a mirror, even better, look into the mirror, look into your eyes, look deep into the depths of your soul. And I want you to tell yourself your own reflection. I want you to look at yourself and say, I love you. Without self-love, you can't feel God's love. You're disconnected from it all. Without self-love, you there will be an imbalance in giving and receiving. So you'll be codependent or needy or just mean <laughs> or maybe walled up or closed off. You don't you won't allow yourself to receive. Or maybe you want to give so badly that you are like a helicopter mom where you pour out so much love onto your kids, they have no room to breathe. You're smothering them. Or not even your kids, but your spouse. I changed my mind. I turned my heater off <laughs> and now I'm cold again. So, all right, keep going and looking into your eyes, into your soul, into yourself. Look into yourself deeply. If you have a real mirror, this is a good exercise to do every day. Looking deep into your eyes. Pammy says, I love you. You are free. You are me. We are one. Good. Good affirmation. Thanks for coming up with that. Without self-love, you're disconnected from inner wisdom and divine intelligence. Without self-love you're disconnected from others. You can't, like, all relationships stem from the degree of self-love that you have for yourself. <clears throat> so to the degree that you love you is only to the degree that you will be able to pour love out onto others. So if you don't love yourself very much, People will not feel love from you when you try to project it. It's going to feel very clingy and codependent or harsh or manipulative. Okay, so there has to, it starts with loving you. And it also starts with recognizing the flow, the, where the appropriateness of flow of love starts. It begins with God. 
as you open up your awareness to the fact that God's love is always flowing into you, you can drink of it deeply if you want to. That's your source. That's what you plug into. You can plug into the love of God just by thinking of God. Just by pretending to be in the presence. Just by imagining and meditating on that. And feel that love flowing into you. That's how you fill yourself up with love. You don't go running around into the world attaching to other people. Because it's not their job to fill you. They can't. <laughs> they, they, they don't even know how to fill themselves. And this isn't pride. To, to love yourself first. This is not pride. This is not... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're not self-serving. It's not e egoic. It's not egocentric. It's not self-centeredness. It's authentic. It's the greatest gift that you could give anybody that you know that you're connected to is self-love and not putting yourself down, not apologizing for who you are or what you do or your presence. Never, ever, ever, ever apologize for you. Stand up for yourself. Honor yourself. Love yourself so deeply that you're willing to provide that nurturing that healing from all the wounding that you got when you didn't feel love you didn't feel connected to love the only reason you didn't feel love was because you didn't know how to connect to you you forgot you disconnected from you when you're connected to you you're connected to god it's the same thing it's what opens you up to connecting to god <clears throat> and by the way those of you in loving relationships, ecstasy will never happen if there are heart walls of protection and these barriers and these secrets and these chambers where nobody else can get in. You can't have ecstasy if you are in a state of protecting your heart from more wounding. Ecstasy happens when you, when you open yourself up, like just like that picture, you open your heart up so wide and so big and so huge and so expansive that all there is that's flowing out of you is love, not pain, not hurt, not rejection, not betrayal, not wounding, not victim mentality. You've let all of that go. So ecstasy happens when a being can love themselves so much that they then attract another being who loves themselves so much that they're willing to share the best parts of themselves with each other without needing it from each other. They just share it back and forth in the most vulnerable, the most open way. They surrender to each other. That's ecstasy. And most people will never experience ecstasy because they have too many walls and barriers and protection. So let's let some of that go. Um, one last thing about self-love. When you don't love yourself deeply and profoundly, you don't know how to access that divine light that's so expansive, then you are disconnected from your inner compass. You don't know how to really access the part of you that's guiding you on your path to your highest good. You're disconnected from that. Nobody owes you love but you. It's your job. You, you got to figure out what the source is. You got to figure out how to connect. And that's what you're doing today. So now let's go back into the heart. Go back into that expansive, like you stepped into the sun and the sun stepped into you. Breathe into that. Push that light out bigger and brighter. Fill up the room as you breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. When you breathe in, you're breathing in God, into your bones, into your flesh, into your organs, into all the spaces, into all of the empty space. When you breathe out, you're just pushing that light out bigger and brighter and brighter and brighter, and you're shining, piercing the darkness. Good. Now, just like all of that light from your center, goes out in a million directions, above you, below you, in front of you, 
behind you, that expansiveness of you. When you breathe out, I want you to let go of all the gunk. Any gunk in your heart that you're harboring that maybe makes you feel sad or bad or um, taps you into that abandonment, rejection energy. Just let go on the exhale. On the inhale, I want you to say, I am divine love. It comes to me from God into my soul. It feeds my soul. It establishes the foundation of my soul. I want for nothing. I need nothing. I am all the love that I need. And God dwells within. <clears throat> Next, I want you to say out loud, I open my heart to all around me. So everything in the universe, every human, every animal, every plant, everything in the universe, you now as this expanded being of light, your presence now becomes the container of the universe. So when you see a stray cat on the street, when you see somebody struggling or suffering, they are you. They are you. So I open my heart to all around me. Say it out loud. Breathe in, breathe out, expand out. Let that light inside of you pierce through the darkness and just breathe out all the gunk, letting go, letting go, letting go, but expanding, 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 shining through all the gunk, shining through all the, dark, the darkness. I put my heart and my love into everything I do. Say it out loud. I put my heart and my love into everything I do. I am now an open channel for love. And lastly, just say, I am. And as you say, I am, a couple of times out loud, just let it permeate, let it go within, let your attention go inside deeply. And as you breathe, expand out and just feel into the stillness of your soul. Feel into yourself. Notice what that feels like. Okay, that's it for our opening the heart space. I could have done a ton, a ton, a ton more, but I think what I'll do is I'll type up a handout for you guys and you can go on your own over the Christmas holiday. You can do your own inner heart work. This is vital. It brings balance to all of the other energy centers in your system. And it allows you to be a more true version of your own sovereign autonomous self. So it is vital. And so I'm gonna put together a handout. It'll take me a couple of days to do that, but I will, um, when I post the replay of this, um, it'll be emailed to your inbox. It will be on my Facebook wall. It will be in the Facebook group. Wherever you find the replay of this video, there will be a handout. Kristen says, I feel blessed to be a part of this call. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. Anybody have any comments or questions or you want to share um, what this experience was like for you, letting go of all this suffering and all of this victim mentality energy? and stepping into the more sovereign center of your soul. Ha, huh. that needs to be on a headline somewhere. Whew. Does that feel better? Do you feel more expanded, more open, more light, more fluffy? What do you feel? Give me some feedback. You can unmute your mics and your cameras if you want to, or you can just type it into the chat box. It's totally up to you, whatever you wanna do. Shauna says, I still have pains to work on, but today, 
uh, I felt a big shift and I learned something I didn't realize before. Oh, awesome. If you want to share what you learned, that would be, that would be amazing as well. Good job. Thanks. Anybody else want to share? What was your experience? What did you learn about you? What did you learn about the importance of self-love? Shauna says, I learned about mother wounding. I had no idea was there. Yeah. Sometimes we, we think mother wounding only has to do with our own mothers. I learned mother wounding sometimes has to do with being a mother or someone who was your mother or a mother figure. Edith says, I feel calm and peace. Good. That calm, peaceful feeling you feel is you. So congratulations. Welcome home. Welcome home to yourself. Stay in this state as long as you can. See if you can maintain this state of dropped down, centered, grounded, stable, and expanded. When you walk into an energy, or, uh, like a, a room full of people, you'll be the strongest state in the room, the strongest, most stable energy in the room. So practice this often and let it become your default. Someone says, I'm so grateful. Oh, I lost it. Hold on a second. Janet, I feel so good. Last weekend, I was struggling with self-love and forgiveness. I feel so much better. Good. There's, there's deeper inner work we can do around this. And if you do need more help, you can reach out to me and we can do some private mentoring um, if that's something that you're interested in. Shauna says, we can't let go of things we don't know are there. So this was huge for me. Good. Yes, true. There has to be awareness. That's how you choose. It's how you... Um, that's how you exercise the fullness of your agency to choose to let something go and to become something better, something bigger, something more powerful. You are the most powerful when you are self-loving, when you are the lover of yourself in every way. Ashley says, like a warm blanket, cuddled and warm. Okay, thank you. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thank you for your presence. We'll meet again next week. Um, next week, let's see, is the 27th, I believe. And it's the last class of this year. And then following that class, I'm really excited. We're going to just do more of these kinds of experiences where we do self-healing. And um, I may tap into individuals. I may give you guys an opportunity to just jump on and do some self-healing. We're going to primarily focus on sovereignty for the year of 2023, spiritual sovereignty, what it means, what it is, what it means to truly be a human. Um, you are so much more than you've been led to believe. And so I really want to help you learn how to tap into that. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Katie says, I feel motivated, like I need to take my expanded loved self to clean my home and expand in all the rooms with all this fluffy light. I'm blessed to be a part of this group. Thank you, Janet and friends. Yeah, I'm, we're blessed to have you. Thank you for participating. And again, um, this will be recorded. All of the videos or all of the classes for next year into 2023 will be recorded and they'll be put up on my YouTube channel, Greater Life, Greater Impact, so that you can have access to those and share them with your friends and family. I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. I hope you fill the world with your light now, not with bitterness, not with sadness, not with pain and suffering, not with neediness, not with victim mentality, but that you stand in the sovereignty of your own soul. And now that you know how to do that, you have some tools. Uh, Loretta says, what is a different what a difference this class meant for me. Thank you so much, Janet. Yeah, thank you for being here. Go spread that light out into the world. Go fill the world with your love and your light and be that light that you think you need. All right, take care, everybody. I love you all. Mwah. All right, talk to you later. See you next week.